My name is Ezekiel. Hope you are doing well today. In this video, I'll be showing you my token drum mix with TG12345 and Piltec EQ P1A with Kickwalk Tip. So these are the three basic um, plugins that I'm using here. Um, for a couple of time ago, I've been having several requests and questions that I should make a video on how to use saturation on token drum. And I have a set of uh, different plugins that I was using for token drum. But um, okay, I thought of okay, I want to change uh, the way I mix my token drum. I simply want to mix my token drum with just one plugin or two that I will be attaching one or two, three plugins together before I mix my token drum. So, and at the same time, I want to mix my token drum to sound fat, rigid, um, more energetic. And for this reason, I came up with TG1345, which is a lovely vintage channel strip which has um, many features, almost everything in a channel strip, um, with the compression limiter, and what about on the compression side, uh, you can use it as a sidechain if you really don't want to compress all the total signal. Um, again, lovely something here is, I love the tape emulation, in TG1345, whereby it has two tape tone characters, whereby you can switch in both ways, warm, bright, or bright, bright, or warm, warm. And this makes my signal to sound more realistic, like I'm mixing the token drum on an analog uh, console. So it gives me a kind of realistic character on my token drum. I love the way it uh, responds in token drum. Uh, another thing I love about TG12345 is its unique uh, three-band parametric EQ, the low shelf EQ, the high shelf EQ, the mid um, EQ, which has um, attenuator and sweep, whereby you can sweep to whatever frequency you want to attenuate or boost. Then I love something also the switch button whereby if you really want the compression to go first before EQ or you want EQ to go before compressor, uh, you can switch between the compressor, EQ and presence or presence dynamic. However, so I use this one to make my token drum with one click, boom, the token drum sound heavy, uh, realistic and more energetic. And the uh, Piltec EQ, I use it to concentrate on the frequency that I really want to uh, treat because TG12345 has high shelf EQ, so I can't really go with a particular frequency except for the, the presence to attenuate and boost frequency. So I concentrate on the 60 hertz and around 5 to 8K on Piltec EQ. So before we Move on. I would love to play the music, the percussion uh, section for you, just to listen to the percussion in a few moments. Now. So I'll dive into it. You will see what I do in that. That's so lovely. So let's just go into the real business. So you see what I'm doing here. So firstly, I'm going to turn off all the um, plugins. Then I'll begin to demonstrate and to show you uh, what is going on from TG12345. So let me just do that and see what is going on in that.
now you can hear a difference in the mix of from when I tried to bypass the TG12345 plugin and when I turned it on, when I bypassed it, and when I was trying to uh, dial in the parameter settings, you could hear the difference, you could hear the energy that is given me in the mix. So uh, I've not turned on the compressor. So I'm going to do that now so you can hear the um, contribution of the compression on my talking drum. So let's listen to this one now. Okay, if you don't really understand what is going on here, when I turn on the compressor, the searching button, I turn it up all the way to 100%, but I enjoy the compression, but it's going to somehow spoil my talking drum mix because the way the talking drum is being played also is sounding as if there's a limiter because it has a threshold where it stopped. I only need the compressor to control the dynamic, to bring together all the signal in the token drum for me and to add more character uh, for the token drum for me. So uh, when it's going to be turned in into the rest of the mix, so you're going to hear how it's going to sit in the rest of the mix. So it's going to sound lovely. So one thing I want to do again is I want to adjust the um, the release time because the nature of the music I'm doing, I love the way the talking drum sound now, but could I have to make the talking drum to sound more consistent? I really don't want too much of the dynamic because the playing of the talking drum initially doesn't have its consistency in the playing. So I want to increase the release time, so my token drum signal, the way it's playing, so it can control the dynamics. So when it's going up and down, it won't be too much. There'll be a little difference in the signal flow. So let me play that and I'll open the rest of the percussions so it can hear how it sounds and how it sits in the mix. You can also hear this one when I turn it all the way up to ratio 6. The, the signal flow has been tamed down, which also sounds good, but that's not what I really want. I don't want to tame down the um, signal flow in the mix. I still want dynamics to go on, and I want my talking drum to be controlled, to sit among the rest of the mix, so it won't shine out over the rest of the percussions. So now I'm going to turn on the Apeptech EQ. So let's hear the contribution of that in my token drum.
If you observe what I'm doing here, after trying to play around with the frequency button, you can hear the sweet spot. Most especially what most people like in making talking drums sounding, booming, boom, boom, boom. I don't mix like that. But what I believe is moderacy. It's just like somebody with a kind of baritone voice speaking. You will not enjoy compared to someone who has a natural um, frequency response in his voice talking. And if you boost too much of the low end and cut too much of the mid, you wouldn't hear what he's speaking like because it talks much, not just a melodic like keyboard, piano is playing. It speaks like words and speaks proverbs. So that is why if you kill the mid in the talking drum, it doesn't sound good. And if it boosts too much of the low end, it's going to sound rumble in your mix. It's going to sound clashing with a kick and a bass guitar. And in this one, I'm just alternating the low end so that I can see how it clean the body and clean a smooth low end. And I'm doing the same thing on the high and I'm just boosting the eight. So I'm going to play that. With the rest of the music on the percussion, let's see how it sounds and how it's sitting. Then one more thing is, initially in the in this mix, after I already work on the TG12345, when I applied a pick turkey cue, I just tried to bring it before the TG12345 to hear how it sounds like. I want the compression to control the frequency response. And I won't, don't want much of the booming because of the music that I'm doing. Yet I still have a nice low end in my mix. So that's why I moved it before TG12345. That's how I left it in the mix. For this demonstration, um, just bring it down. So for your own mix, when you are using these two plugins, so with all your own desire, you can use Pitech EQ after TG12345. And depending on your music, you can use it before TG12345. But in my original mix, I use it before TG12345. So let's hear how it sounds in my mix. What I'm doing on the tube is with the input level and the output level, that one is just neutral as it was uh, from the factory. Uh, so what I really mostly concerned about is my drive. You can hear how it sounds like when I drive the knob all the way up to the 50%. It controls not only the signal, it controls the character, add more flesh, brings out the detail in the talking drum. Uh, controls the signal flow in the token drum. It controls uh, my frequency response. It doesn't make it sound more heavy in the low end, and it gives me a kind of smooth high end. This is what the saturation is doing. This is one of the reasons why I use saturation, and this is the beauty of the saturation in every of the mix I use it for. That's about the um, saturation on it. I'm going to play everything together now. So let's see. I have one or two things to adjust from it.
That's all about my talk and drum mix with uh, TG12345, a Piltec EQ P1A, and a Tube Saturation in Kickwalk by BandLab. This is Talk Plugin in Kickwalk. And as for this project, I'm going to put the link below whereby you listen to the way it sounds in real time in the mix. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Please put down the comment. Let me hear or let me understand how you mix your token drum. What you use? Do you use saturation on token drum? How do you approach your token drum to sound clean, to sound good, to sound more energetic in the mix? Thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. See you next time. Bye.